Hi, I'm Sakib Jang. I'm in the marketing department at Chelsea Communications, and I'm going to be presenting an overview of uh, storage benchmarking. But the goal behind storage benchmarking is to determine if a storage system meets the needs for supporting a particular application. Benchmark has to be representative of the actual application that is under consideration. And benchmarks typically export a number of workload parameters so that I.O. transactions presented to storage can mirror the actual application as closely as possible. The first parameter that is required to be configured on the storage benchmark is the block size parameter. Uh, block size refers to the amount of data passed by the host to the storage system in each I.O. transaction. The correct uh, block size choice determines the IOPS or throughput requirement uh, for the storage system presented by the application. Examples of uh, block sizes are, for a transactional application, a block size of eight kilobytes is typically used. And in the case of a large file application, such as a video streaming application, a block size of 256 kilobytes or higher is used. The second parameter that is important to be configured on the storage benchmark is the read-write ratio. The reason it is important to accurately configure the read-write ratio is that reads and writes are typically treated differently by the storage system. For example, writes to flash storage systems are generally slower than reads because of programming and weir uh, leveling operations. And the ratios for a read-write operations differ by application. For example, in the case of an OLTP application, the ratio is 60 to 40. In the backup case, 100% reads. And in the restore case, it's 100% writes. Access patterns are also important to be configured uh, on the uh, benchmarking application so that the benchmark truly represents the application under consideration. From a practical standpoint, typically two types of access patterns are considered. The random access pattern is typically seen in online transaction type applications where reads and writes are made across the entire data set. In the sequential access pattern case, uh, this is typically used in the case of large file applications such as video streaming as well as backup and restore applications. Uh, the fourth important uh, parameter typically configured on benchmarking applications is the outstanding request population. And this determines basically the degree of parallelism in the requests that are passed by the application to storage system. And it, it basically determines uh, the effect on storage system performance as more SSDs or spindles are added. Uh, finally, uh, the last important parameter that needs to be configured on, on the benchmarking application is that of the working set size. And basically, this refers to the total address space for data either written or read from a storage in a short period of time. And this parameter determines the degree to which data is written and read from cache and the resultant performance boost. To summarize, a benchmark must be a representative as closely as possible of the actual application under consideration. In order to achieve this, the benchmark must take a, num a number of workload parameters into account. Uh, uh, these parameters include block size, read-write ratio, access patterns, working set, and demand intensity. Thank you.